So you're about to style one of your first photo shoots. What's next? In this video, I'm going to tell you step by step how to prep for and manage your photo shoot like a professional fashion stylist. Stay tuned. Hey Brave Soul! Welcome back to Brave Mo Studios. I'm Jessica and we give you the most practical steps to help you become a successful fashion stylist and fashion industry creative. Today's video is all about how to run a photo shoot seamlessly and efficiently. That's how you prepare for the photo shoot, what you do once you're on set, and how you prep and complete your returns. There's a three-step process that every stylist job consists of. Prep, shoot, return. Part one, the prep. Now here's what goes into prepping for the photo shoot. One, we may have mood board creation. Two, we have researching the brands and calling and emailing clothes in. Three, we have the actual physical act of pulling the clothes. Four, we have taping the shoes and prepping the looks to be used on set. And five, we have planning each look. Now, not every stylist does a mood board for every single shoot that they do. Sometimes there's a creative director or some other creative on the team, or maybe even the production team, who's put together the creative direction and you as a stylist are just another moving part in the creative team to help that vision come to fruition. But sometimes you are asked to create a mood board. I'm asked to create mood boards all the time. Here's an example of a mood board that I created for a shoe brand that caters to an older female customer. The brand wanted this photo shoot to show a woman who's retired, traveling, and on the go. I changed the names of the shoes just for this video, but the brand sent me pictures of the shoes that we would be shooting, and I created a particular vibe around each shoe. Once the mood board was approved by the brand, I sent them to my assistant so that she and I would be clear on what kinds of looks that we would pull for each shoe. Simply put, the mood board is just so that you can communicate with the team what types of visual aesthetic they can expect with the clothing that you're going to be providing. I will have another video that specifically talks about how to make a mood board for different types of shoots. Now on to researching brands. Depending on the type of mood that the shoot is supposed to have, you're going to want to be very particular about the types of brands that you select. So say there's something very kind of dark and edgy, you may want to choose brands like Alexander McQueen and maybe even Balmain. But if you're doing something more whimsical and light, you may want something more like Reformation or Free People. Whenever you research a brand and you're wanting to pull clothes from them, you want to contact their press contact or PR contact. Usually this is an email address and or a phone number that's on the website of the brand. You'll contact them, give them the mood board, or just explain the direction of the shoot, and you can send them pictures of the particular pieces that you want to use. Now the physical act of pulling the clothes. Now if you live in a city like Dallas, I'm based in Dallas and New York City, so when I'm in Dallas and I'm pulling clothes, it's a little bit easier because I have a car and I can throw the clothes in the trunk. Well, not throw them in the trunk, you know, and be careful with them. But I can, you know, place the clothes in the trunk and I can, you know, kind of haul them in my car. But when I'm in New York and I'm styling, it's a little bit more taxing. I have to be very careful about my taking care of my feet and my back and my shoulders while I'm pulling clothes because it can be super taxing. No matter where you live, you definitely want to be careful about your health and the sustainability of your car. <laughs> pulling clothes can add tons of mileage to your car and tons of mileage to the heels of your foot, okay? What some people may not tell you about fashion styling is that it's very hard work. And you have to have a lot of muscle to make sure you can carry all those bags. I know in New York, I have carried 50 pounds of bags probably running around the city, making sure that I'm pulling clothes for photo shoots or for different projects. If you're a budding stylist, I just want you to keep in mind that this job is not very glamorous. The only glamorous part of fashion styling is really the photos that are yielded from the photo shoot that you're doing. <laughs> you definitely want to keep that in mind as you are starting to style and when you start assisting other stylists that don't see it as a glamorous job, see it as something that requires really hard work. The last two things that come along with prepping for the photo shoot are taping the shoes if you need to and planning out the looks. I always tape the shoes at least with painter's tape if I know I'm gonna be inside if I know I'm gonna be outside with the shoes, I always do two layers of tape. I use painter's tape and gaffer's tape. 
I will put links in the description below that show you what gaffer's tape is if you're not familiar with it. A gaffer is an electrician professional that's always on set and they use what's called gaffer's tape to make sure that they keep the electrical cords and things like that all in place. Stylists also use that same tape to protect the bottoms of shoes. I will also have another video later on that shows you how to tape shoes. Lastly, planning your looks. So after I've pulled all the looks, I always organize them on my rack and then I lay them out on the floor so that I can mix and match the pieces that I wanna use and style them prior to the shoot. Then my assistant and I will take pictures of each look in the sequence that we plan to use them in so that the next day on the shoot, we are running like a world old machine. Someone asked me, hey, what look is next? I'm like, oh, I know. Or my assistant can say, oh, I know, have it right here. And we can look down at the phone, know what look is next, move on to it. That's a great segue into how you manage your time and your space when you're on set. This concludes part one. Part two coming soon. Go ahead and subscribe and ring the notification bell.